This is a video just to get hyped up about the Neuralink announcement coming this Friday, August 28th. I'm sure you guys already know about it and you're super excited, as am I. If you want a more in-depth video, I did one after their last announcement last year. Uh, I'll link that up here and in the description. In case you don't know, Neuralink is a brain computer interface. They drill a hole in your skull. They fit it with a computer chip that has little electrodes that dip down into your brain, sit there right next to your neurons and they can fire them and read them. So it's read and write from your brain. This is going to help people who have been paralyzed, who can't talk, who can't move. But in the far future, it's also gonna do some pretty amazing things. Telepathy, enhanced cognition, talking to dogs, synchronized dancing, vacationing in someone else's brain, merging your mind with a collective and becoming a borganism. The possibilities are so insane that we haven't even thought of them all yet. And look, BCIs are not new. There's a bunch of companies. Paradromics, like Neuralink, is developing an invasive under the skull technology. But most of the companies are using EEG technology, so it's non-invasive and it measures the electrical impulses in your brain. Companies like Emotive, Neurosky, these companies actually have products on the market as gaming headsets or like meditation and wellness and health headsets where you can uh, learn how to control your brain waves and calm yourself or get yourself in a flow state. Very cool stuff, but none of those EEG machines, none of them will write to the brain. There's one though called Open Water that I'm gonna talk about later. And they have an amazing technology that's non-invasive, but it promises to also write to the brain. So read and write. But why are we so excited about Neuralink? Two words, Elon Musk. What's fun about Elon is that he's not afraid to get everybody excited about some far future goals and have a mission statement for his company that reflects that. Neuralink's actual mission statement that Elon tweeted recently is, if you can't beat them, join them. It's not, oh, we're gonna cure paralysis. That's not the mission statement. The mission statement is, we're gonna join the AI. That's what gets people excited and that's why people do want to join him. This is reflected in the company's growth. They were founded in 2016 and by 2017, there were 45 people. By 2019, they had doubled to 90 people. They've been hiring and still have 16 job listings on their website. So what do we know? Well, Elon's been tweeting, of course, and he said that we're gonna see live neurons firing. We're gonna see the matrix in the matrix. He's also said that this year's tech is gonna be way better than last year's presentation. The current technology is called the N1 chip and it's a processor that's connected to all these really tiny threads. The threads are four to six micrometers thin, which a micrometer is a millionth of a meter. A millionth of, of something? Why are we even comparing it to a meter. Elon was also on Joe Rogan talking about how they hope to have Neuralink in a human by the end of this year. Let's talk predictions. Okay, the predictions could get pretty crazy. Elon steps on stage, he's already got a Neuralink and he's an AI now and has a, a mind meld with a monkey, maybe. Okay, let's get into the real predictions. First off, I'm wondering who we're gonna see on that stage. There was a news article from Stat News that says there's trouble in Neuralink land and that a bunch of people have left the company and they're only left with two of the eight founding scientists. Who's left? Is it a toxic environment over there? Let's hope not. We want a good company, we want good vibes. Hopefully this article from Stat News is a bunch of bull and everybody's still there and more. I wanna see new faces. They've hired a lot of people. Maybe we'll get to hear from somebody brilliant that they've hired recently uh, to show us the new tech. Speaking of new tech, the N1 chip, 1,024 threads each. So this year it would stand to reason that we're gonna take a look at the N2 chip, more threads, smaller, faster chips, and a faster connection to the cloud. Elon has already said he's going to show us the matrix inside the brain of a monkey. But what I'm hoping for and what I think is plausible to expect is to actually see footage of a monkey controlling something with its brain. So maybe an iPad, maybe a robotic arm. After watching a bunch of artificial intelligence experts and brain experts 
talk about Neuralink on Lex Friedman's podcast. What I think is super likely for Elon to talk a bunch about is how the brain is really the most malleable part of the brain-computer connection and how it's really going to be brains learning how to use this functionality more than it is for the functionality to adapt to the brain. And once a brain adapts to this thing, the effects are pretty permanent because your brain doesn't change overnight. This could be a huge barrier for people that don't really need it to fix an ailment, but are just looking for an enhancement. Uh, because if you're a healthy person and you get this and then your brain adapts to it, taking it away could basically cause you brain damage. But besides just having the Neuralink removed, what about just losing connection to the internet? You're gonna wanna have some sort of onboard processing that can stay with you in case maybe you just wanna go off grid, but not lose all your superpowers. So it'd be really nice to hear Elon talk about how the Neuralink is actually going to train the brain and write to the brain and make us smarter so that if it goes offline, we're actually left better off than we were before. Maybe you can program all those numbers and new languages and addresses and reasoning skills into our brain so that we don't need to use it all the time and rely on it. The last thing I wanna talk about is lossless communication. And Elon spoke a bunch about this on his recent Joe Rogan podcast. You, you literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other. Yes. Yes. You wouldn't need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain spends a lot of effort compressing a, a complex concept into words. And there's a, there's a, lot, of, a lot of loss, information loss that occurs when compressing a complex concept into words. And then you say those words, those words are then interpreted, then they're decompressed by the person who is listening. Um, and they, they will at best get a, a, a very incomplete understanding of what you're trying to convey. It's very difficult to convey a complex concept with precision. And you can convey your thoughts with no room for interpretation, mm -hmm. with clear, very clear, where you know what a person's saying and you can tell them what you're saying and there's no need for noises, no need for mouth noises. This seemed great at first, especially when you think about all those fragile snowflakes that are adding aggression and offensiveness to everything with their own interpretation of how hard the world is. But then I watched Lex Friedman's podcast with Manilis Kellis, probably butchering that, and he was talking about how lossy data transfer is actually a feature when it comes to human communication. Imagine if we could connect these brains directly to each other. The amount of information that I'm condensing into a small number of words is a huge funnel, which then you receive and you expand into a huge number of thoughts from that small funnel. This might actually not be better because in your misinterpretation of every word that I'm saying, you are creating new interpretation that might actually be way better than what I meant in the first place. The ambiguity of language perhaps might be the secret to creativity. So Neuralink looks to be an amazing technology that could completely reshape the human experience, but there also looks to be like some things that we're gonna have to watch out for in case it makes us stupider or, you know, lowers the amount of good ideas that are being generated in the world. At the beginning of this episode, I mentioned Open Water. They are a company that is doing internal imaging. It uses near infrared light mixed with ultrasound. And even though it's non-invasive, it promises to not only be able to read from the brain, but to write to individual neurons. Open Water is run by Mary Lou Jepsen, who has an amazing track record as an executive at Facebook, Google, Intel. She's just had a huge career in shipping consumer electronics. And this is what Open Water is trying to create. This is kind of bulky for us. Our goal is a wearable, but an alpha kit where you can scan. A consumer product that competes with MRIs. I mean, can you imagine hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on MRIs and you can have it in something the size of a cell phone? And the fact that the technology can be used for reading and writing neurons 
uh, makes it ideal for a brain computer interface. I messaged her on Twitter to ask, is this real? And she got back to me saying, yes, non-invasive BCI like ours at Open Water makes brain surgery required tech obsolete. So that's just a little teaser for Open Water. I'm gonna do an entire brain computer interface near the curve and that's coming up soon and I'll talk more about Open Water and Neuralink. But I think based on the way Elon said this. Well, for version one of the device, it would be um, it, it basically it implanted in your skull. That Elon understands that version one is going to be invasive, but that future versions of Neuralink may not be. So I would not be surprised to see Elon talk about, you know, N5, N10, and using something like Open Water's near infrared ultrasound technology. But let me know in the comments what you think Elon is going to announce on Friday. I just wanna thank Joe Scott again for the collaboration and sending all those people my way and welcome uh, new subscribers. I got a bunch of fun stuff coming up. I had uh, an AI GPT-3 write me an entire episode of Near the Curve. So that's coming soon as well. Drop a like, and if you're new to my channel and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. This is Fonzie. He makes cameos sometimes. Uh, that's it. That's the video. Peace.